morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body, is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in checking out any of the longevity products, please head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Love to have you on our team. You can make some money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Check out our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. We also have a blog up, the Skin Health blog, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Once again, I want to say a few more things about our ketogenic diet. We're going to talk about it in terms of practical application here for the next day or two. By now, most of you know the ketogenic diet is a low-carb, high-fat diet. Proteins are said to be moderate, whatever that means. To understand how all nutrients and their relative proportions in the ketogenic diet work, it's important to recognize that the body treats all the food that we eat, as delicious and as tasty as it might be to us, as just fuel and raw material. Proteins go to build things, bones and muscles and cells and organs and the stuff that makes us us. Under conditions of fat and carb deficiency, proteins can sometimes get turned into fuel as well. Carbohydrates are basically long chemical chains of sugar. They get turned into fuel pretty quickly, and what's not used up is stored as something called glycogen. And if there's any extra, that gets stored as fat. The fats are mostly stored in the liver and then in the muscle and fat cells, unless there's not a lot of carbs around, in which case the fats get burnt for energy. For most of us, the majority of fat we eat is going to get stored in fat cells, which of, of which we have many billions. The, the secret to the ketogenic diet is avoiding the carbs, and so the body is left just the fat to burn. It's a fat-burning diet. If you're going to be able to leverage the weight loss properties of the ketogenic diet, you have to have around 65 or 70, even up to 80% of your calories coming from fat, 10 to 20% of your calories come from protein, and a very small amount, 5% or less, coming from carbohydrates. There's no real official standards for the ketogenic diet, so that's kind of a rough guideline. 65 to 80% or so of your calories coming from fat, 10 to 20% of your calories coming from protein, and around 5% coming from carbs. For seizure disorders, which is the primary medical use for the ketogenic diet, 
and this is what's typically practiced in a hospital or otherwise medical setting, you're going to want even more calories to come from fat. According to a 2006 article that was published in the journal Epilepsy Research on the Ketogenic Diet, greater than 90% of your calories, 90% or more of your calories should come from fat. This is if you want to leverage the anti-seizure properties or anti-seizure effects of the ketogenic diet. As far as Alzheimer's disease goes and diabetes and heart disease, these are the other major uses of the ketogenic diet. There's really no definitive suggestions. You're just going to have to experiment. But if you stay at around 65 to 70% of your calories coming from fat, you're probably going to notice some pretty significant benefits and quickly as well. In case of Alzheimer's disease, you may notice benefits in 24 to 48 hours. And keep in mind, it's the kind of fats that are also going to play a role in how beneficial the ketogenic diet is. French fry fats don't count. Processed fats and heated fats are never going to be healthy. So you want to stick to butter and coconut oil for the most part. Eggs are a perfect ketogenic food. Dairy is good too, preferably raw and unprocessed if you can find it. Seeds are also good. Chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, and if you can sprout the seeds, that's even better. If you grind your seeds up, you're going to get the benefits of the fiber, which is really filling, and that will help you prevent snacking. Keep in mind, if you're trying to lose weight with the ketogenic diet, in addition to using fats, to, in addition to making, uh, uh, keeping most of your calories coming from fats, you're going to want to keep your calories down. You want to keep your calories down to a minimum. Eating only when absolutely necessary. That's a general rule of thumb for health. Eating only when necessary. Sounds, sounds kind of like, you know, obvious that we only eat when necessary, but unfortunately we don't eat only when necessary. And that's a big problem. Fiber, eating fiber is a great way to support caloric restriction. Probably the best way, one of the best ways, along with protein, to support caloric restriction. Fiber is very filling. Of course, one of the best ways to get fiber and your carbs, for that matter, is by eating veggies, 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 which are about a clo as close to a perfect keto food as you're going to find. Although you have to keep in mind that veggies are not always benign. Sometimes there's stuff in veggies. Sometimes there's medicinal compounds in veggies that we can react to. To understand the importance of veggies in any diet, really, just as a health food, but particularly in terms of caloric restriction and the ketogenic diet, we have to take into account the nature of the body as an electrical system, as an electrically vibrating system. Fruits are important too, but because of the fact that fruits are kind of, technically speaking anyway, they're extensions of vegetables. They're the result of the pollination of flowers that are found in vegetation. So fruits are actually kind of a, an extension of veggies. And because fruits tend to be higher in sugar, uh, sugar content, the sugar in a fruit is there to, f to feed the seeds. The fruit encapsulates seeds and the stuff in the middle, the pulpy stuff in the middle is basically food for the seeds and sugar is a primary source of energy for seeds. So fruits tend to be higher in sugar. So we're just going to talk here about vegetables, but as far as foods go, as far as superfoods go, veggies are ridiculously important. But in order to really understand how powerful and how important veggies are, we got to talk a little bit about how the body is an electrical system, an electrically vibrating system. We spend most of our time on the bright side, and most of, our, most of the time we talk about nutrition, we really talk about chemistry, biochemistry. But when it comes right down to it, our health and wellness depend on the flow of electrical energy. We are electrical beings. And the flow and the movement of electrical energy is not homogenous. It's not like there's one kind of electrical flow. Electrical energy doesn't just move. Electrical energy pulses. Electrical energy pulses on and off rhythmically, and it pulses on and off rhythmically at different rates. The technical term for this pulsing on and off is frequency, and it's extremely important to understand if we're going to really take advantage of the power of vegetables. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We're back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. You can also check out my blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website. 
You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, you're not going to find that one anywhere, folks, except at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All our Truth Skin Health products are made without preservatives, without fragrances, without water, without filler, without wax. They last months. And you're not going to have to deal with any ingredients that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And you can also check out my skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Okay, so veggies are the perfect ketogenic food. They're the perfect caloric restriction food. They're loaded with nutrients and they're loaded with fiber. And to understand how unbelievably important these things are, we got to talk a little bit about the electrical nature of the body. The body is an electrical system. We talk about chemistry all the time, but it's really an electrical system. It depends on the flow of electrical energy, which occurs in various rates or pulses. The technical term for the pulsing of electrical energy is frequency. And there's many different frequencies that the electrical energy in the body pulses in. We hear the word frequency all the time. A low frequency electrical pulse, technically that's called a Hertz, after some guy named Hertz who first came up with the concept, a low frequency electrical pulse or a low Hertz turns on and off slowly or cycles slowly. It turns on and off, pulses, cycles at a slow rate. The electrical frequency, for example, of large entities like planets, like planet Earth, is around seven. It pulses on and off seven times a second or so, something like that. They call that the Schumann resonance. A high frequency electrical pulse, say radio waves, can pulse thousands of times, even millions of times a second. That's called a kilo or a mega frequency or a kilohertz or a megahertz. In the body, there's lots of different vibrations and frequencies. You've got the heart frequency, which is around one to two cycles per second. The hairs in your inner ear can vibrate up to 10,000 cycles per second. The, the little tiny uh, uh, particles in your eye can vibrate trillions of times a second. Can you imagine this? Trillions of times a second. How does something vibrate trillions of times a second? That's the amazingness of the electrical nature of the body. So the body's made up of all these different pulsing rates, all these different frequencies, and they're all operating simultaneously. And for us to be healthy, all of these pulsing rates and all of these different frequencies have to be occurring at just the right proportions and just the right frequencies, all at just the right rates. We are electrical systems and our electricity is vibrating at many different rates and this is where minerals come in. Minerals carry this electrical vibration. Minerals store this electrical vibration. Minerals pulse. Minerals have frequencies and the body can use these frequencies as activators. The frequencies activate the chemistry. They turn on the chemistry. All of our biochemistry is activated by the electrical frequencies, the energy pulses that is carried by the minerals. That's why minerals are so fundamental. They turn everything else on. Vitamins are activated by minerals. Enzymes are activated by minerals. Proteins are activated by minerals. Fats are activated by minerals. Sugars are activated by minerals. All the cells of the body are activated by minerals. And without these minerals, to the degree that they're missing, we become sick and we ultimately die. Living organic minerals, and I'll tell you what these are here in a second, living organic minerals are the fundamental energy of the life force. They carry the fundamental energy of the life force. And without them, nothing could live. And this fundamental nature of minerals and their relationship to health and disease was one of Dr. Wallach's brilliant insights, maybe his most brilliant insight. And why? He and longevity places such importance on their regular intake. Because over the last hundreds of years, farming and fertilization and soil depletion have kicked in. Veggies, which should be carrying these minerals, have become depleted in the minerals. And that means the animals that subsist on them have likewise or will likewise become deficient in, in, in these important electrical substances. So the most important source of these electrically vibrating substances in our day-to-day -day lives are the vegetables. These vegetables perform the great miracle of somehow turning inert, inorganic minerals into living substances in service to the animals that subsist on them. 
Vegetables serve the animals. See, we live on a planet of minerals. We live on a, a rock. Earth is, in essence, one big mineral made up of about 4,000 different minerals. And every year we find more, uh, probably 30 or 40 more minerals are found every year. So Earth is one big mineral, one big rock made up of, of about 4,000 little, smaller rocks. And every year we find more and more. These, uh, most of these uh, minerals, most of these rocks are composites that are made up of 90 or so basic minerals. We call these basic minerals the elements in deference to their basic or elemental or fundamental nature. If you want to know what these basic minerals are, basic elements are, all you got to do is take a gander at the periodic table. That's what the periodic table is. It's a listing of all the elements or all the fundamental, fundamental minerals that make everything else up on planet Earth or actually throughout the universe. We got all these elements on the periodic table floating around in space. Although 99% of our planet is made up of just eight of these things. So there's 90 or so minerals, but the vast majority of the planet is made up of silicon, magnesium, sodium, calcium, potassium, aluminum, oxygen, and iron. They're all important, though, even the ones that are only present in tiny little trace amounts. But here's the important point about these earth minerals, these, these rock minerals, they're not alive. They're inert. They're biologically dead. They cannot sustain life. You can eat all the rocks you want and you're not going to get any life force. They cannot sustain livingness without something to turn them on, something to vivify them, to animate them to bring them to life. Planet Earth would be a dead rock floating around in space like zillions of other planets in the universe. But we know that planet Earth is not a dead rock. It's quite alive. In fact, it's teeming with life on every square inch from the deepest ocean cavern to the highest mountaintop. You've got minerals or you've got life. So what is it that animates this dead rock of ours? What is, it that brings, what is it that brings this rock of ours to life, that brings dead rock to livingness? Vegetables. This is what the, the great gift of vegetation. Vegetables have this incredible, magical way of transforming dead rock minerals into inert or even worse, minerals that are toxic and poisonous, not just non-living, but anti-living. Substances like sulfur and phosphorus and chromium and iodine, which would ordinarily kill us if they weren't somehow activated via the action of vegetation into, into a living substance that's capable of sustaining and feeding the life of higher animals. This is a miracle of the highest degree, and it's performed by the humblest little vegetation on planet Earth. We'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. Our number is 844-236-6010. We have lines open for you. Try to call in early if you can. Don't wait till the last minute so we can get to as many folks as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you in just a second. I'll probably finish up talking about vegetables tomorrow. They're so darn cool from an electrical standpoint. And then uh, tomorrow we'll also continue talking about some of the more practical aspects of the ketogenic diet, how you can utilize it if you're interested in utilizing it for weight loss or for cardiovascular health or for Alzheimer's disease or if you're dealing with seizure disorder issues, all, the, all, uh, all benefits associated with the ketogenic diet, especially Alzheimer's disease, dementia issues, and it doesn't take very long, folks. If somebody's dealing with dementia issues, it doesn't take very long for a low sugar, a low carb diet to kick in. You know, Alzheimer's disease is actually a type of diabetes. It's now called type three diabetes. And if you're dealing with it, or you know anybody who's dealing with it, using sugar metabolizing nutrients like the B complex and zinc and omega fatty acids and going low, low carbohydrate, going ketogenic is an amazingly useful strategy for, for dealing, well, not just for dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's disease, but dealing with all mental health issues. And even if you just want to keep your brain healthy for, uh, for your, the duration of your time on this planet, it's a good idea to go low carb and to use to make sure that you're using your sugar metabolizing nutrients. So 
the gift of vegetation, the gift of the vegetable, the gift of the humblest little tomato plant is that it has some magical way. And I say that advisedly because we don't really know what does it. It has some incredible, mysterious, magical way of transforming rocks into life, into bringing rocks to life, into making l dead rocks, living rocks that have, have a frequency or an energy that the body can use. Technically, we say that the vegetable turns inorganic minerals, dead minerals, into organic minerals, living minerals. And this is the, the confusion that arises when people see things like arsenic or nickel or, or uh, aluminum on, in, on the ingredient deck of their Beyond Tangy Tangerine. They're not taking into account the distinction between inorganic minerals and organic minerals. I know we've talked about this a lot, but it bears repeating. There is a fundamental and critical distinction that you have to make between organic minerals, living minerals, and inorganic minerals, dead minerals, which can, which can indeed be toxic. Okay, we'll continue talking about this tomorrow as we continue talking about the ketogenic diet and the importance of vegetables, as well as other practical aspects for employing this really stupendous, healthy way of eating, the ketogenic diet, the low-carb, high-fat high, uh, moderate protein diet, the ketogenic diet. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let us go to Joseph in Pennsylvania. Good morning, Joseph. Hey, uh, excuse yeah. me. Hey, hey, Keith, will you grab that phone for me, buddy, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Joseph, go ahead, man. Yeah. Good morning, uh, Ben. I spoke to you on coast to coast before about, okay. uh, about the Integratron and stuff like that. Today, I'd like to uh, speak to you about something and get your opinion on this. I wanted to ask you just hang for a on, while. Hang, hang on a minute, Joseph. Hey, Keith, if you're listening, man, will you please grab that phone? Thank you so much. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Go I'm ahead, Joseph. talking about uh, today about phytates, phytic acid in legumes, which are beans, nuts, seeds, corn, wheat, and rice. Yes. Referred yes. to online as an anti-nutrient mineral yes. blocker, transition yes. element blocker. Yes. Um, it's got a high affinity of phosphorus, which uh, gets in our body and masks the ability of our cilia, philia, to uh, absorb these uh, trace minerals that we need. So my question is, uh, is there an order to eat these, which I've seen, they allude to an order that you're supposed to eat these uh, beans, nuts, and seeds when you're consuming meat, because if you eat them in conjunction with the meat, you'll, your body will absorb a fraction of the proteins and minerals from the meat. Now, uh, they claim that herbicides and pesticides destroy the microorganisms in the soil that allow the plants to absorb these minerals. And, and I also want to ask you about fulvic acid. Could that be a key to all of that? Well, so, so you're, asking a bunch of, you're asking a bunch yeah. of questions there all at once. So let, let's break this down, okay? Because you've yeah. got three questions in there already. So hang tight. Let's, let's talk about phytates first, okay? Phytic acid, uh, also called IP6. Uh, and, you know, here's the deal with phytates. It's not like they're all bad. There's, it, there's some uh, really beneficial qualities to the chelation or, or the binding ability that phytic acid has with minerals. In fact, that makes them anti-cancer. Some minerals like iron can actually, when, it's, when iron is not processed correctly by the body without getting into too much chemistry, it can actually be, induce cancer. So phytates can be anti-cancer. So it's not necessarily that they're all bad, although they do, they can tie up minerals that are in plants and make them unavailable. I'm not convinced that phytates can tie up minerals from other foods because if they're already tying up minerals, if they're already locked up to minerals in the plant, they're not going to be available to lock up minerals in other foods. You follow me? They're already busy. They're already, they're already tied up in the plant. So they're not free phytates, they're locked up phytates, and as such, they're not necessarily going to interfere with, with the minerals that are in meats or in other foods. You follow me? Does that make sense, Joseph? They're already doing their business. They're already locked up in the plant. What they will do is they'll keep minerals from being released from the plant itself, at which, in which case you're not going to get the mineral value from the plant, and that could happen. Sprouting your vegetables can help break up the phytates. Um, there are bacteria, as you say, also that can do it. So 
it's so, kind of a mixed bag. They are, by the way, phytates also have antioxidant properties, so I'm not necessarily convinced that they're all bad, although uh, you do want to probably be a little bit careful if you're eating a lot of uh, fibery kinds of foods. The phytates tend to be found in the outside part of the, uh, in the bran part of the grain or in the outside part of the vegetable. They're, they're actually mostly found in grains, by the way. That's really where phytates are found in the bran uh, part of vegetables, also nuts and seeds to a certain extent. They're found in harder kinds of material, uh, the outside part of uh, the bran part of grains or the outside part of seeds and nuts. Um, but I'm not necessarily convinced that they're all bad. Now, you asked another question there about the order. Uh, I don't know that that necessarily makes a difference because the phytates, are, like I say, are already busy. They're already tied up in the plant, so they're not going to be necessarily be available to lock up the minerals and the meats or the other. Uh, or, uh, by the way, they also lock up enzymes, supposedly. They lock up digestive enzymes and such, so they have enzyme inhibitors effects. The reason the phytates are problematic is because they're actually there to keep the seed kind of dormant. That's one of its functions is to keep the seed asleep. That's why when you sprout the seed, when you add water to the seed and the seed becomes alive, the uh, phytate effects are diminished. So the phytates in the seeds have an anti-nutrient or anti-enzyme effect because their function is to keep the seed dormant. When you sprout the seed, you lose that phytate effect or because the seed is now alive. So that really is the best way to uh, minimize the effect of phytates, in my opinion. I think you asked the third question. I don't recall what that was. Uh, oh, fulvic else? acid. Oh, yeah, fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is awesome stuff. And the reason it's awesome stuff is for the reason that is, is all the stuff we talked about at the beginning of the program. Fulvic acid is electrical minerals. Fulvic acid contains electrical minerals. In fact, it's thought that life actually began in fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is a component of soil, for folks who don't know. Um, and fulvic acid can be an amazing, amazing source of good nutrition. Vegetables will contain some of those nutrients because they're growing in the, in the, in the soil that contains the fulvic acid, and they're absorbing those minerals. Fulvic acid is made up of dead plants from, uh, from eons ago, and this is one of the sources of plant-derived minerals. Joseph, i got to take a break. You want to hang on? Okay, hang on. Thank you. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Fanny. 442 is our number. We're talking to Joseph in Pennsylvania. Hey, Joseph, you there? Yes, I am. Okay, so uh, let's see. Phytic acid, you know, good and bad. I'm not really sure which way to go with that. It's, uh, it's a chelating agent. It can uh, uh, chelate heavy metals, iron particularly, also mercury, lead, cadmium and such. Um, it does tie up some minerals that are in the plants. It may not get the nutritional value of plants, and it may have some enzyme inhibition effects due to the fact that it's there in the seed to keep the seed quiet, if you will, to keep the seed dormant. But I'm not necessarily sure that it's all that bad. Uh, phytic acid. If you want to get rid of your phytates, sprout your veggies and or sprout your grains is the best way to do it. It's mostly found in seeds and grains, the phytates. But uh, by the way, what was now you were going to? Oh, fulvic acid, the fulvates. Yes, uh, fulvic acid is basically a composite made of soil and organisms and dead plants and minerals and clays, and it can actually be quite wonderful as a nutritional supplement. Um, the best way to get, the, the, if you don't want to supplement with straight, straight fulvates, uh, eating veggies that are grown in soils that contain these organisms and these minerals is the best way to get the yeah. nutrients that you'll find in the fulvic acid, and that's what we were talking about earlier in the program. Now, you want to ask one more thing, Joseph? Yes. Uh, I wanted to put this out there. Uh, it's about bread, and uh, over the years of doing research on bread, I come up with this uh, copulation of bread. Maybe you can uh, uh, get into this or not, but uh, for me, uh, I'm not going to advocate that bread is good. I'm going to just say that bread has a high glycemic index. The body metabolizes it as fat. 99% of the bread on the shelf is bleached or bromide, which is toxic to your body. And only if you buy 100% whole grain sprouted bread found in the frozen section will you get the benefits of the enzymes. There's an enzyme in wheat flour that uh, disrupts the natural flora in our gut, which are microorganisms, bacterial microbes, that slow down the digestion, and they're affecting the non-soluble fiber in the digestive tract. And these phytates uh, are shown to to, uh, to affect that non-soluble fiber. And also, how do you mean? I, how do you mean that? Just be specific. The well, phytates affect the non-soluble, insoluble fiber. You said, or soluble fiber. Well, the non 
non-soluble fiber, and it's very important that non-soluble fiber, you, people would think that the non-soluble fiber would be there to just push the, uh, the, the composite, the, the material through the 31 feet of uh, intestine, but there's an, uh, there's an overt clue that that non-soluble fiber is very important. I mean, they tried to debunk the, uh, the uh, non-soluble fiber in the mother's milk back in the late 60s. They tried to reproduce that, and they Wait found that there, that was there, the key. I'm not sure where you're going with this, Joseph, with all due respect. There's no fiber in milk, but I, I think your point about the fiber in the digestive tract is very important. Yes. In addition to sweeping yes. stuff out, improving the movement of, uh, of food through the digestive tract, fiber also provides a healthy environment for the probiotics, the good bacteria in the intestine. Fiber is incredibly, yes. incredibly valuable, insoluble as well as soluble. Hey, i got to motivate, Joseph. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it as always. Take care, brother. Have a beautiful day, Thank man. You. All right, uh, let's go on to Oregon and welcome Mary to the bright side. What's going on, Mary? Hi, Ben. I've hey. used your Truth Omega-6 healing cream, and uh, it is so effective that I even forgot that I'd been burnt. I've used nice. it other times. It's effective every single time. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Have you used it on sunburn yet? No, uh, wait, no, I haven't. Wait till you get some sunshine out there in Oregon, and, and if you get sunburn, it's amazing for sunburn, too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Did you want to ask anything, or you just wanted to share that? I just wanted to share that. I appreciate that very much, Mary. Take care. Have a beautiful, uh, beautiful day. We'll talk again soon. Thanks. Are you going to be in Anaheim, by the way? No, I'm not. Oh, you're not going to be in Anaheim. Okay. Well, we'll see you again soon when I'm in Oregon. Thanks so much. Take care, Mary. Okay. Uh, for you guys who don't know, Anaheim is where uh, the Longevity Conference is going to be. And if you're uh, in the L.A. area or in the Cal Southern California area or not, if you want to check, uh, check out the Longevity Convention, if you're selling the Longevity products, you might want to check out the convention in Anaheim. It's super-duper inspiring. And one of the great things about the Longevity Convention when you go is you get to see people who've experienced the miracles of... <laughs> The longevity products, the longevity philosophy, people who've lost 100 pounds, people who've gotten off all their medication, people who were in walkers and wheelchairs months before, and now they're walking about, people who were going to have their legs amputated and now aren't going to have their legs amputated and are healthy. It's just an amazing, inspiring experience, and it's uh, the second week in April, I believe, and if you're uh, interested in checking that out, go over to Longevity uh, Youngevity.com, I believe, and uh, take a look at the, the convention in Anaheim. All right. Uh, let's see. 844-236-6010 is our number. Denise in Santa Cruz. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, good morning, Ben. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. About Kelly. Thank you. My girlfriend Kelly is going to have a baby, and I've told her about the BCT. Yeah. So is there any... Anything else that she should be doing? Besides oh, so things? many things. So many things. Yeah. yeah he, uh, by the way, the B, I get I get people ask me all the time if the BTT is safe if you're pregnant, and it's not only safe; it's important if you're pregnant. Yeah. As is all nutrition. It's you know when we're when we're eating and we're supplementing, or when we're not supplementing, or when we're eating lousy for ourselves. That's one thing. But if we're growing a baby, the baby is getting the benefit or the lack of benefit of what we decide to do in terms of how we eat and how we supplement. So. I personally okay, believe uh, supple supplementing is very important. If you're thinking that you're going to get all the nutrients that you need from your prenatal uh, vitamin, think again. It's not going to happen. The prenatal vitamin basically is just a multiple vitamin with extra folic acid in it, which is great, but you need a heck of a lot more. Most important thing, right, you know, well, I don't want to say the most important thing, but one of the most important things is omega fatty acids, particularly omega-3 fatty acids, which build the baby's brain as well as the baby's nervous system. And also, by the way, Denise, every thing I'm going to tell you about is not just important while the baby is in the womb, but while mm -hmm. the baby is breastfeeding also, these are very important strategies. So first of all, omega fatty acids, and uh, particular, particularly the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. S second of all, I iodine. I was around when I had my kids. Well, now, you know, we can only do what we can do. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. Iodine is also, you know, people were smoking cigarettes when I was, when I was, the, uh, you know, I, when I, right in the 60s and the 50s, they didn't even know drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes was a problem. So we have come a long way in that regard. Omega-3 fatty acids, very important. Iodine is very important. Okay. Zinc is very important. 
Right. Protein is very important. Probiotics are very important and fermented foods. And please, please, please do not underestimate the importance of making sure that you're eliminating food toxins, food allergens, anything that the mother reacts to in terms of digestive symptomology. If the mom has asthma or eczema or any other kind of immune conditions, foods that trigger those conditions will also affect the baby. And that oh, means the, yeah. baby, the baby will be more predisposed towards immune problems not to mention developmental problems. So uh, it's very important to recognize that whatever mom is suffering from, baby is going to suffer from. Here's another thing. Cortisol, stress hormone. If mom is uh, subject to emotional stress, mental stresses, sugar stress, in addition to digestive stresses, then she's secreting a lot of cortisol. That will be a baby that is going to be more sensitive to the stress response. Not a good yeah. thing. So moms have to learn to activate the relaxation response consistently. Okay. <laughs> that means stresses, emotional stresses, mental stresses, in addition to physiologic stresses and biochemical stresses and nutritional stresses. But I cannot overestimate or underestimate, I can't overemphasize the importance of relaxing the body. Not only does our bo do our bodies grow when we're activating the parasympathetic or relaxation nervous system, but baby's body grows more effectively. So relaxation strategies, massage and hot baths and and just gen deep breathing and just general relaxation is incredibly important yeah. in addition to all I'm the nutritional strategies. She, I'm Go ahead. seeing that she's already retaining a lot of water. She, her feet and she's not very far along. I know she's on the little overweight side, but well, she's, if she's overweight and her hormones are off, you know, that's going to affect the baby as well. So that's we have right. to take into account when we get pregnant, that's a major responsibility. We don't have the right in my, I'm not going to get pregnant, so I can't say this. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I got to be careful when I say this, but in my opinion, we don't have the right to live our lives as, as normal. If we have lousy habits, if we're pregnant, because now we're responsible for another living being and that's not fair and that's not right in my opinion. All right. I got to motivate, Denise. That's the end of the program. Thank Thanks so you. much for your call. God bless you. Good, God bless you. Good luck. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet and vegetables and some practical aspects of how you take advantage of this really incredible way of eating. Whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you have uh, mental health issues or seizure disorders or any of those kinds of things, just as a good, healthy way of eating, low carb, high, uh, high fat, and moderate protein, the ketogenic diet. We'll continue our discussion tomorrow on the Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my website, Truth treatments.com, also pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com. Have yourselves a beautiful, awesome, spectacular day, folks. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.